through the eyes of a traveler. Now, if you thought this was a video recording of a park, you would think that that would be a fair assumption, as I'm showing pictures of flowers, in fact, in a park. But you know how I like to trick everyone, and this is no different from the previous review I did, because this is a review of this machine here. The Inazuma 250 or Suzuki Inazuma GW250. Right. Now, what can I tell you about this bike before I get into deep, meaningful conversations about this bike and its specifications and what it does? Um, well, I'm going to sit down and tell you a little bit about what happens between biker and bike. There is a love affair. And it's not a romantic love affair, so maybe it's not a love affair. Hmm. Well, there's a, a relationship, shall we say, between biker and bike. And it's a relationship based on trust. Because once you have a bike and you trust that bike, you know that bike will take you out of situations where you could be in trouble. And often we forget that these bikes, these machines, so often save us from close calls some people think it's their own riding ability but I actually think that on occasion it is but on occasion it also is the ability of the bike to get you out of a mess that you might have put yourself into anyway that being said let's get on with the review
So you've got the specs now of the motorcycle. You've seen the dimensions. It's an attractive bike. It's a naked bike. For those watching in Pakistan, I just want to point out at 250 cubic capacity, there are only two bikes which are pure Japanese. And that is the CB250 and the Inazuma 250. So one is Honda, one is obviously Suzuki. Um, other bikes exist, but they are Chinese bike. That's not to say Chinese bikes are not good. They are. Um, but the finish, the fine tuning, the smoothness of a Japanese is very hard to replicate unless you're Japanese. Let's be honest. So getting back to this bike, I think it's best to describe the bike in pluses and minuses and advantages and disadvantages in pros and cons. Now, unfortunately, I'm hard pushed to find many cons, many disadvantages, many negatives to this bike. Uh, the few that I will offer uh, may be seen as pedantic, quite petty, but we have to be fair in our review. So number one, there is no USB port on this bike. So you cannot charge devices on the go. And I think that's a real shame. Uh, especially as most Chinese bikes uh, come um, with USB ports as a standard. So that's that's a, a little let down. Number two, the suspension on this bike is fantastic for a naked bike. However, if you look at different terrains offered by different countries, in Pakistan in particular or in Asia, a lot of the roads aren't as smooth as they should be. Lots of potholes, uh, part dirt tracks and this bike um, I did amend by adding some off-road tires but the suspension on this is still not as soft as I'd wanted but it, nevertheless it's not firm it does the trick if it was slightly softer I think this would be a fantastic bike to take off-road as well I know the clearance is only 165 uh, millimeters but to be honest I wouldn't take this where there's rocky terrain, just dirt tracks. And in fact, I do later on in this video and it fares well. It doesn't let you down. Um, and with the smoothness of this engine, I think it's a good alternative. Now, any more negatives? Um, I'm finding it very difficult to find any more negatives. Oh, it doesn't have a windscreen, but that can be, um, corrected um, and I think that's it for the negatives the positives well number one it's a Japanese bike there's no denying the smoothness the quality of Japanese number two it has acceleration in every gear I'm not saying this boasts a really high top speed uh, I took this to 135 I believe and I think that's when it tapped out but I am 100 kilograms and I did have some weight on the bike in terms of luggage but it's absolutely fantastic in acceleration in every gear first second third fourth fifth it it does it all so um, on that basis I would say it's uh, a major plus um, what else starts every time on the nose you press the button and it starts uh, it's very smooth in the gear change. Um, and to be honest, uh, facts that I found out about this, thanks to uh, my older brother, Usman, um, were that it works on the same chassis as a 250 Suzuki V-Strom. So you could pursue some minor alterations and try to make this a little more adventure-like. However, just adding the tires that I have, which are adventure tires, it was perfectly fine. Later on in the video, you'll see me going off-road and it held well. The grip was fantastic. Uh, the ride was very good. No vibrations in this bike whatsoever. Just the suspension, as I said, suspension is not as soft as uh, a, a pure adventure bike, but you know, uh, needs must. And if you need to turn this into an adventure bike, um, it's doable, it's very doable. Um, other pluses, the mileage is great, in other words, the average, it's about 26 
kilometers to the liter. If you ride it really sensibly, you can push that to 28, 29. And if you ride like me, which is sensible uh, with little spurts, it really does do the 26, 27 uh, kilometers to the liter, which is absolutely fine. Um, on a 13.3 liter tank, um, you're getting over 300 kilometers out of the tank, and that, that's, that's reasonable. Now, some would say it's only a 250cc. To be honest, I don't think that's a real problem. In the countries where this is being pitched, 250cc is classed as a heavy bike. And in countries in Europe, this is a great commuter bike that can do everything that a big bike can do. All right, it'll do it in a slightly uh, slower time, but it's so slight that it's insignificant. It's comfortable. It has 183 kilogram weight, wet weight, which seems heavy, but because the weight is lower down, just like the V-Strom, it feels really light and nimble. Right, now I'm gonna show you what I did on a dirt track, off-road. And to be honest, uh, even though the, the video doesn't show how rough this road is, this road was rough with lots of sand, but it, it, it gripped well, it held well, it did well. So overall, my conclusion is that this bike is, again, a wonderful offering by Suzuki. Rarely do you find anything that Suzuki offers um, that is below par. This is well above par, 250cc, so it's cheap to buy, and it'll do everything that you can expect of a 250, but it'll do much more. It'll compete with the bigger bikes, I'd say up to 600cc, and I'm not talking about speed, but I'm talking about keeping up, doing whatever the bigger bikes can do. Okay, on straights, it's gonna fall behind, but on bends, it will hold its own. Um, and if you're thinking in Asia to convert a bike, a better bike, uh, into an adventure bike, then I would consider this for sure. Yes, the clearance is only 165 centimeters, but to be honest, do you need more? These are situations where you may encounter an odd rock that protrudes, but then I guess you'd be even more careful and therefore that 165 wouldn't come into play. Time for me to bid you farewell. Please do like, subscribe and until next time, ride safely.